I'm really thrilled in our first episode of Stuff that we get to speak to one of my favorite academics in South Africa, Professor Mawala, who is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Johannesburg, but he's also the co-chair of the Presidential Fourth Industrial Revolution Commission. And it's a very interesting time we're in, isn't it, Prof? Because, because of lockdown, we're at, at a tipping point. We've, we've seen an acceleration of so much technology development in the last 10 years. A doctor told the New York Times last year in the midst of it, I think it's the best quote, he said, what we're seeing is 10 years of change happening in a week. And that really catapulted so many people into new ways of doing things, working from home, learning from home. I'm sure you've observed the same. No, absolutely. Well, uh, automation is not new. We have been automating things for 70 years. But we have been automating physical things. Now we are automating cognitive things. And this is where the human brain comes uh, into, into the picture. We all know now that uh, the chess champion is no longer a biological human being. It's an artificial intelligence machine called Deep Blue. And we all know that artificial intelligence is able to diagnose diseases better than uh, a, a human doctor. So this is an exciting period, but it is also scary mm. because uh, what is going to happen to the world of work? Who are we as human beings if we can just be replaced by a machine like that? There is this term called super singularity. Yes. Singularity is basically a concept that was borrowed from physics. Uh, the characteristics of singularity is that you can no longer make predictions. You don't know how things are going to behave. That's exactly the era in which we are. Some jobs are certainly going to disappear. Many jobs are actually going to change and new jobs are going to emerge. Now, knowledge has been democratized. Of course, access to data, access to devices are still barriers for many people in our rural areas to, to, to access some of these learning materials. But I mean, I remember when I was a kid growing up in Venda, you know, and I have heard about uh, Albert Einstein, but there was no one who could be able to tell me what this man has done. You know, uh, there was no public library where I could go and read about uh, uh, Albert Einstein at the time. So, but today, you just have to go to Wikipedia and you will know almost everything that he had to say. But that's really fascinating because part of the human growing up process is just gathering enough data to have a database from which to, mm. to do things in the world. I suppose in many ways, we train our kids at university. We give them as much information. This is everything you need to know about your chosen career. Off you go and, and make those connections. The, the key word is actually connection. Yeah. I, I spent uh, a long time uh, uh, living outside South Africa. And I would go home. And somebody who has not seen me for 10 years will be able to recognize me even when I am walking opposite to that person yes. from the back. You know? yes. I mean, those are the wisdom that we ought to deconstruct so that we are able to build better machines. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's bring it back to South Africa. We have a golden opportunity where everything that didn't work before is being shaken up and we're coming oh. up with new ideas. Let's brainstorm how we think, I mean, you've probably done this a lot, how we should be educating our, our youngsters, our tertiary educators. I, I think education must become much more multidisciplinary. I think uh, 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 the issues of artificial intelligence are multidisciplinary issues. They touch on human beings, they, 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 they touch on technology, they touch on, on, on the legal aspect of it, you know, they touch on biological sciences, you know. Very, very important that our education must become multidisciplinary. Secondly, we need to start early. And then the last thing is that illiteracy is no longer the inability to read or write. Yes. So when we have adult-based education, we're thinking about uh, teaching adults how to read and write. Yes. I think illiteracy now is about the understanding of technology, which means we must be teaching people already who are, who we, who are deemed to be educated. This new skill about artificial intelligence, about Internet of Things, not the technical aspect, but actually what it is, what it is doing, and how we should approach it. I totally agree, because... You know, my experience of education was I got this massive cultural and uh, 
literature and other education from my parents because that was their interest. So many people have working parents or single mothers who can't do that for them. Yeah. So, you know, there is the opportunity for yeah. self-learning. I mean, I am i don't know yet how we're going to deal with game playing, but uh, maybe we should be training kids how to learn in a game, you know? Well, absolutely. I, I mean, you know, uh, uh, learning through games is now uh, an established discipline. Yes. Uh, it's just that in South Africa, it has not caught up uh, at the rest of the world. How do you use games, for example? to make kids learn, uh, to make kids learn about uh, uh, adding and subtracting basic mathematics, yes. uh, to make them learn about logic, yes. because in this new era in which we are, logical thinking skills are very, very important. And if you go to our curriculum in our school, yes. there's not an exact course where you can say, this is the course where I am learning how to think logically. Yes. Very, very important. I think you're suggesting we should have a, a how to do logic mm. segment in mm. everybody's in mm. everybody's high school or primary school development. Mm. It, it, it would be immen immensely useful, not just for STEM people, but for mm. or STEM students, but for everybody. Absolutely. But another thing that I would like to add is the infrastructure that we need to put into place. We must have computing infrastructure. Yes. We must. We must have data storage. Uh, infrastructure. We must have connectivity infrastructure because without connectivity, how are people in the rural areas exactly. going to be connected to, to, to all these, uh, these things? And you must incentivize people to basically take these uh, this new developments as a form of a new culture because a yes. new culture is emerging yes. and we need to embrace it if we're going to be active participants in this era. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button below and please subscribe to our channel so that you can get this stuff while it's fresh. See you soon.